you wrote about i was reading an article you wrote it was in 2015 about how to destroy or save or something along those lines the bitcoin foundation you were talking about governance yeah is all the way back then i mean like seven years ago the ideas going on in your head did it kind of stem from what you were learning the problems that bitcoin had like is it do, do your ideas of governance go all the way back there yeah, I mean, just look at the block size debate. Good people like Mike Hearn and Roger Ver, they got pushed out, you know, and, and they're demonized. And, and back then they were heroes. I grew up with these guys, you know. Mike Hearn was in regular contact with Satoshi. He was the first person to work on the Java Bitcoin client. There's emails back and forth between Mike Hearn and Satoshi. Mike himself forwarded those emails to me. Uh, and so that just gives you a sense of the legacy and pedigree. And he was a Google engineer, very competent guy, very brilliant guy. He was one of the first people to talk about smart contracts outside of, you know, uh, Zabo and the rest of the gangs. Left. Gavin Adresen, left. You know, Roger, I left. All these people left because of the way they did things. And and you know, crazy part about Bitcoin, this is why I'm not you know, a big guy in the Bitcoin space, uh, is that they have this mentality that everything that's not them is evil and wrong. Every design decision you make, trade-off you accept, is wrong if it doesn't come from the gospel of Satoshi. That's not a technology. That's a religion. That's doctrine. These types of things. And, you know, the Bitcoin Foundation was so frustrating because there were a lot of people who were there when I was there who were just there to help. And they just legitimately wanted to start organizing stuff so that Bitcoin could actually have some notion of a governance layer. And then you had these anarchists come in and they, they basically said, oh, how dare you try to co-opt and corrupt and take over and self-appoint? We're going to burn you down. Okay. And they said, well, if we're not trying to do this, you guys have to understand that it's going to become more and more difficult to evolve the protocol. And then you're going to miss a lot of stuff. And all that stuff you miss, you don't get. You don't get smart contracts. You don't get this and this and this. And then these maxis come by. Well, we got lightning. Eh, not really. We, we got taproot. Oh, so your smart contracts run off chain. Okay. You know, it's, 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 not, it's not intellectually honest. You know, either you're committed to the, what Satoshi said and it's on the blockchain or it's not. And if you take things off, you're under a different security model, in which case you're now competing against all the altcoins. You're competing against every other idea in the entire industry and space. And then you have to argue why you're better, faster, and cheaper when you have an hour settlement time and you use more energy than the entire country of Ecuador. You have to really have an intellectual argument. And their argument is, well, they're wrong and we're right. And that's perpetual motion. And you say, what is the standard of proof? You know, for example, the proof of stake, proof of work. We didn't, in 2015, show up and say, proof of stake is the end-all, be-all. We didn't know. We were honest about that. So we wrote first GKL. And we said, this is what a blockchain is. Then we said, it doesn't work or not. So we tried to write an impossibility theorem to prove proof of stake doesn't work. And it turned out it does. And we said, wow, okay. And that started a six-year research agenda. Now it's entering its seventh year to build out an entire corpus of logic Algorand is doing the same. There are others doing the same. And you have thousands of scientists around the world, thousands of engineers around the world pursuing these ends. And according to Bitcoin, every single one of them is wrong, so much so that they're dishonest scammers and everything that they've done is wrong. And they point to a paper that Andrew wrote, Andrew Palestra, uh, why proof of stake has a problem. It's crazy. By the way, consensus protocols existed before proof of work. Byzantine fault tolerant protocols were created in the 1980s. The guy who created them is actually the guy who created Algorand, Sylvia Macaulay, <laughs> amongst others for Byzantine agreement. Uh, so, so yeah, consensus, distributed consensus is like an old topic of computer science. There are more than one way to reach consensus in a Byzantine fault tolerant way in a distributed system. What they're doing is saying the only way is the way we have decided is the way, and that's that. And we were seeing that even in 2015 with the, with the foundation and later on with the big block debate and all the things that happened subsequently. And it's gotten so toxic and bizarre that they even cannibalize each other, you know, uh, the flavor of the week. I wouldn't be surprised to see Max Kaiser be thrown over the bus at some point and these other things, you know. 
no one is holy enough and pure enough inside that uh, in that ecosystem. So I sure as hell learned a lot, and I learned that you have to start with principles of what are we actually trying to accomplish here? What are we actually trying to do? The single most important principle to me is decentralization. The second most important principle to me is inclusive accountability. And at times they're at odds with each other. So decentralization is, an easy way of thinking about it is, it's like a game of Jenga. You remove bricks, does the tower still stay up? How many of those bricks can you remove from the tower before the tower collapses? Pretty easy. Even a child can understand that. If you have a truly decentralized system, you can remove lots of bricks and the, and the tower is still there. If you have a hyper-centralized system, you pull one brick out, everything falls over. Look at the centralization of financial assets in 2008. Remove one brick, Lehman Brothers, whole thing falls over. Not exactly a decentralized financial system led to the rise of Bitcoin. You look at other things, like, for example, how resilient uh, you know, uh, U.S. military is. You can destroy a military base. You can wipe out an entire platoon of soldiers. You can do all kinds of things. It's like a swarm. It always finds a way to, to come around because it's built for resiliency and decentralization in a certain respect. They have the ability to fight wars in multiple theaters. And so it's a very different kind of organization than the organization that was the financial industry. Okay. Uh, and the second is inclusive accountability. Your ability to verify things. The magic of Bitcoin is that when someone sends you a Bitcoin, you don't trust them. You can check it against your copy of the blockchain and you know that that's real. It hasn't been double spent and the coins exist. Inclusive accountability. Now, the problem is that as the system gets bigger, that gets harder. What happens when you go from a gigabyte to a terabyte to a petabyte to a yixabyte to a yottabyte? You climb the chain. Your ability to verify goes down. This is why Mithril is so important for Cardano, because it preserves the principle of inclusive accountability even if you don't have a full copy of the blockchain. Any activity you see, you can use those certificates to check them, and you know that they're accurate, and you don't have to trust anybody. And this is why Ouroboros is so important, because as the value of the token goes up, your K factor grows, your level of decentralization in the system grows, the level of resilience in the system grows. That's simple, you see? And the meta properties governance that's wrapped around it, that's the third component, is change. Everything changes. That's the only constant, change. Okay, so how does your system evolve and grow? Because if it doesn't, you're Yahoo on the BlackBerry looking at your MySpace page. You have to have the ability to stay new and relevant and reinvent yourself again and again. And the problem is, the more decentralized you get, that works against your change management. A lot of these people talk about the blockchain trilemma. My blockchain trilemma is decentralization, inclusive accountability, and governance and change. That's the one I care about because everything else is just technology and protocol design. Who cares about that? What I care about is those because they're trade-offs. The more decentralized you get, the harder it is to verify everything. The harder it is to change things. The less decentralized you are, the easier it is to verify things, uh, and potentially the easier it is to change things, but the more control a central actor has over the system. You see? So you have to have these trade-offs. And every time you have great science, what you're doing is moving your trade-off window. You get more for less. You get more benefit, less trade-offs. So we wrote 130 papers because we moved the entire trade-off window of decentralization, inclusive accountability, and governance. It took time. It took effort. That was the point. It wasn't mental masturbation where we're like, yeah, more citations. No, that wasn't the point of this. The point of this was that saying we weren't happy with the trade-off profile that Bitcoin and Ethereum gave the space. And we said, look, at the end of the day, you're going to have to compromise as you gain users. If you go from a million to a billion, you're going to get hyper-centralized in order to accommodate them. If you go from a million to billion, you're going to lose inclusive accountability with that centralization. If you go from a million to billion, either you're anarchistic and you can never change, like Bitcoin, or you're just going to accept custodians for life, beneficent dictators for life inside of the system. Who would want to live in a system like that? How is that fulfilling Satoshi's vision of a decentralized world and a replacement institution? So you can't complain about it. You have to go write papers. You have to go do the work. And you have to say what is possible and what is impossible. There's a very famous theorem in computer science called the FLP impossibility theorem. 
And it doesn't tell you what you can do. It tells you what you can't do in an asynchronous system. So it's not just about saying what capabilities should we have. It's also about saying what will science let you do? What will protocol design let you do? Arrow's theorem in voting systems is another example of that. It's an impossibility theorem about the robustness of voting systems. So you have all these different things, and you have to sort it out, and it's frustrating. You take a step forward, sometimes you get two steps back, a paper gets rejected. Sometimes people prove you're wrong, and you have to have the intellectual honesty and integrity to admit that. Along the way, we've had hundreds of false starts. Why it took so damn long to get Shelley and Gogan out? I wasn't sitting there being like, yeah, let's just take some holidays. God, man, we were working so fucking hard. Seven days a week sometimes. We had some engineers that didn't take a vacation for four and a half months straight. They missed birthdays and anniversaries and funerals. They kept working every single day, and we had to backfill enormous things. It was the most difficult decision of my career back in 2018 when we said we have to rewrite the core of Cardano. Because I'm sitting here thinking to myself, I lose two years of work. How do I make it up? How do, we, how do we speed it up so that we can not feel it? And we tried everything. We even had competing clients with Jormungandr, uh, the Rust client, which we turned into Catalyst and built it in parallel with the system. Every opportunity we could find to speed up development, we did. In some cases, at enormous expense. A hundred million dollars over budget over the last six years. But get it done. One way or the other, it has to get done because it's the mission, it's the progress, these types of things. 